Hey gang, it's Tony from COPO, and I apologize for not posting any tutorials lately. It's been a busy season for me, and it's about to get even more busy. I'm going to go away for a couple of months and work on a big project this summer. So I figured I'd better throw up a quick, short tutorial before the channel gets too stale. Um, and this one's really easy to follow along as long as you have MoGraph. I'm using Cinema 40 R15 Studio, but there's no reason you can't follow along in 14 or 13 at least. I'm going to start by creating a null in the center of our screen. And if I hit play, you can see it just sits there and does nothing. I'm going to bump up our frame count here so we can see what's going on in a second. With the null selected, I can go to Cinema 4D Tags and add a Vibrate Tag. And everything's turned off by default, but if I turn on Position, the default setting is 100 centimeters in X. And what that's doing is it's vibrating that object that has the tag on it, a uh, hundred units in that direction. And we can bump that up to like 500. And I'm going to go 500x, 500y, and I'm also going to go a thousand in Z. So that thing's flying all over the screen like crazy. So I could change it, the frequency from 2 down to 0.5 to slow it down. And let's kind of pull this back a little bit. And that's nice. Now, uh, what's going on here, let me hit stop for a second and reset to the center. I'm going to turn off the position, turn on rotation and hit play. You can see it's got this wobbly vibration, kind of a random pattern, but if you turn on regular pulse, you get something more mechanical like a, a washing machine or a, a, the pendulum of a watch. Um, and you can change the rotation in all the different axes of that as well but I want to just affect the position like we're doing and turning on position and hitting play. Now it's kind of flying over crazy because I'm in that regular pulse. It's very mechanical direction. I still want that random path. And I don't have much control over this. I can change the seed to get a different pattern happening, but this is just kind of this random pattern I don't have control over. And what I can do now is with the null selected, go to MoGraph and hit Tracer. And that Tracer is following the path of the null. So if I grab the null, you see the null is moving around and the Tracer is tracing a path behind it. That path doesn't render, but what we can do, let me reset here and go back to the beginning. What we can do is create like an end side. I'll drop the sides down to three and the radius down to something small like 20 and I can create a sweep NURB and put the inside and the tracer inside that sweep object and now when I hit play as that tracer grows it's sweeping that path with the inside if I grab the tracer and change the limit from the end to something like 25 frames now it grows and the back end follows as it moves along, kind of like a worm. If I grab the sweep object and I change the end scale from 100 down to 0, it tapers it. So now I've got this kind of arrow shape going here, and it's automatically subdividing and giving me all these vertices, which is really great, because now what I can do is create a pyramid. And with that pyramid, let's change it to something small like 10 by... 30 by 10 maybe, go a little taller, 50. And I can put that pyramid with it selected. If I hold down Alter Option and hit a cloner, it drops the pyramid into a cloner, and I can change the default from linear to object mode, and then tell that cloner to clone that object on this sweep that we just created. Now this is cool because this kind of looks like a spine or a vertebrae of some sort or a mechanical robot arm or something. It's really cool. But notice that all of the pyramids are facing inward. That's because they're generated on the Y axis when, they're, when they were created. And we can change this to the X axis. But what's happening when I do plus X, the arrowheads are facing the opposite direction uh, from the, the way that our path is flowing through our scene here. I want them facing front, so I'll change it the orientation to minus X. And there we go. As this thing worms around, we've got all of these pyramids cloned to every vertex on there.
but they're aligned too perfectly. They're they're hitting every corner too exact, and it's a very mechanical look to it when you render. So what we can do is tell the cloner, don't clone onto every vertex, but just clone onto the surface of this shape. And then that gives us a slider where we can actually change the amount of clones that we're putting onto that surface. Uh, and what's happening here at the bottom, as you can see, the sweep object has a cap on it, so it's trying to clone on the surface of that cap. So let's turn off the cloner for a second, grab our sweep object, go to the caps, and I can turn caps off and you can see they disappear. So let's just not put a cap on here. So when we clone, it's only cloning to the surface, which are the sides. And that keeps all the pyramids facing forward like we want them to do. This is really great. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to hide the sweep nerb and just see the cloners that are glued to the surface here. But if I turn off the checkbox, it's also turning off the shape, therefore there's nothing to clone to. So we want to leave the checkbox on, but if I hold down Alt or Option and just double click these traffic lights, it's going to hide it from the editor and the renderer. And now we're just seeing the cloned objects. Let me turn on my line so you can see. We're seeing just the cloned objects. Uh, as they're glued to that invisible shape that's going around there. The next thing we can do to just kind of randomize this, mix things up, if I grab the cloner and go under MoGraph and select Effector, Random Effector, now it kind of spreads these out. Default, the position is turned on and it's spreading these shapes out a little bit. And we can also change the scale, randomly change the scale of each cloned object. So I want to do it uniformly so they scale uh, the same size all around. And I could just slide this around, just get some different sizes in there, kind of something interesting like that. And the same for rotation. If I click on rotation and just start spinning this in the heading, now I don't want to go off of that front facing axis too much there. So just a few degrees just to make them a little random. And then in the pitch, this is great. We can spin them 360 degrees around if we want. So each clone is going to be at a different angle. And then the banking again is kind of like the heading. We don't want to go too far off of the, the front facing direction, but a few degrees is kind of cool. It gives it some random feel to it. Then finally what we can do with the cloner selected, MoGraph effector, a delay effector, and we can change the default from blend to spring. And now as that shape hits each corner, there's kind of a bounce happening to the motion of our cloned objects here. Now let's scale these down a little bit. Let's take this pyramid and I just want to scale them all down a little bit so they're not banging into each other so much there. And there you have it. Uh, it's a quick way to do a, a flock simulation, like a, like a swarm of bees or uh, birds off in the distance. If you're in a hurry and you don't have time to run a uh, particle simulation, you don't have much control over this. There's, um, I mean, you can add colliders if you have the time to figure all of that dynamics out, but then you'll have issues with having to, you, the objects will fall away if you don't put a, uh, a follow on them. So what you can do to make this a little more random, let's grab everything that we created here and Alt G to put it into a null and we want to copy and paste that null. And then what we can do with the vibrate tag on the bottom, we'll just change the seed of that from zero to some number one, two, three, four, five. And now we've got a secondary swarm happening here in a different pattern. And uh, just to make things a little bit more random than that, you can grab that tag and change its frequency speed. So it's moving at a slightly different speed than the other one. And there you have it. We've got a nice quick swarm simulation happening with very little effort. This works when you're in a crunch and you just need to have some really cool shape happening in the background uh, with very little effort. Uh, another thing you can do um, is it doesn't just have to be the pyramid. We can come in here and bring in an elephant if we want to. And all you have to do is go into your cloner and replace your pyramid with uh, an elephant. 
So let's grab that elephant, scale it down. And now we've got a swarm of elephants flying around. Pretty cool. So that's the tutorial, guys. Uh, nice, short, and sweet. And hopefully you learned something fun here today and a quick way to create a swarm or a flock simulation. So thanks for checking it out. And I'll be back in a couple of months and hopefully have a more in-depth tutorial for everybody. See you, everybody. I hope you have a good summer. And unless you're watching this in the winter, then uh, I guess time is irrelevant. Thank <laughs> you.